Hey guys, Mrs. Hijack here with your Changes in Motion Objective 2 video. Notice that there have been some changes to your matrix. The objective now reads, understand how balanced and unbalanced forces affect motion and how to identify forces on a motion graph. And then seven essential questions. Define force, identify the unit to measure force, and list three examples of a force. What is the force of gravity on Earth? What is a vector and how do parts of the vector and what do parts of the vector tell me about the force? What is net force? How do balanced and unbalanced forces affect motion? And then draw a position versus time graph and label where the forces are balanced and unbalanced. So pause your video here if you need to make some changes to your wicks and um, come back when you are ready to go. All right, guys, your wicks should be all set up and ready. So here we go. What is a force? Well, a force is any push or pull on an object. And there's forces pushing and pulling on objects all the time. The unit that we use to measure force is the Newton. And the symbol is a capital N. And this Newton came from the scientist who first put together force and motion, and that was Sir Isaac Newton. Some examples of forces are gravity, magnetism, and friction. Now, gravity is a force that acts on everything all the time. It's a pulling force that pulls us down, keeps us on the ground. And the size of that force on Earth is 9.8 Newtons. Now, the force of gravity is different on different planets depending upon the size of the or the mass of that planet the larger the mass like Jupiter if we went to Jupiter there would be a lot more gravitational pull on Jupiter and so we would actually feel heavier as gravity pulls down on our mass to give us weight um, if we were to go to Jupiter and stand on a scale the scale would read much higher in weight because there's a larger pull of gravity pulling down on our body's mass. However, if we went to the moon, where the gravity is only um, a tenth of the gravity of Earth, then we would weigh a lot less because there would be a lot less gravity pulling against our mass to give us weight. Um, so here on Earth, the size of the gravitational pull, the force of gravity is 9.8 newtons. Which of these examples of forces is working against motion? Motion goes one way, and then this force always goes in the opposite direction. I hope you said friction. Friction is a force that is always working against motion. Um, air resistance, for example, is, a, uh, is friction that works against um, motion so as you're walking or a ball is rolling or a plane is flying one direction friction is a force that acts against it which causes a lot of objects to slow down a vector is an arrow which indicates the direction and size of a force the arrow can determine the direction that the force or indicate doesn't really determine but it more illustrates the direction that the force is going and also the size of the force being applied so the direction of the force that's being applied is indicated by the direction that the arrow is pointing and the length of the arrow then indicates the size of the force or the magnitude of the force how big the force is that's pushing or pulling against something Net force is the sum of all forces acting on an object. If the forces are working in the same direction, then those forces will be added together. But if the forces are working in opposite directions, then those forces will be subtracted from one another. And we can calculate the net force of an object or the net force of the forces working on an object if we look at net force diagrams. So here's a net force diagram and we can see that there are two forces. Notice those vectors. Both of those forces are working in the same direction and they both are illustrating a force of five newtons. 
what are we going to do with these two forces? I hope you said we're going to add them together because they are going in the same direction. So I add 5 newtons plus 5 newtons and I get a net force of 10 newtons being applied to the box. Take a look at this net force diagram. Here we have two forces that are working on this box, but now they're going in the opposite direction. So what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract to determine the net force. So 5 newtons minus 15 newtons gives me a net force of 10 newtons being applied to the box. And here is another net force diagram. Again, the forces are acting in the opposite direction. So to calculate the net force, I subtract 5 newtons and 5 newtons, and I get 0 newtons of net force being applied to the box. So we can use these net force diagrams, which uses vectors, to help us then figure out the forces that are acting on an object. We can then determine, once we figure out the net force, we can then use these net force diagrams to figure out how these forces would affect the motion of the object, which we'll do in a little bit. So. We're going to talk about two different types of forces. We're going to start with balanced forces. Balanced forces are when you have equal forces acting on an object, but these forces are in opposite directions. Like here with this giraffe. This giraffe is standing on the ground, so there is a downward force of weight being applied to the ground, but the ground is applying an equal but in the opposite direction, push against the weight of the giraffe. So the giraffe is standing on the ground instead of falling through the ground, which would be very, very weird. Here we have balanced forces. Again, the forces are equal in size. I can see that with the vector length and in opposite directions. The result of balanced forces is that the motion of the object is not going to change. So however that object is moving, when the forces acting on it are balanced, then the motion is going to remain the same. Let's take a look at some net force diagrams and balance forces and see how balance forces don't change motion. So here I have a box at rest. Let's first calculate the net force. 50 newtons minus 50 newtons gives me a zero newton of net force. So there's zero newtons of force being applied to this box which is already at rest. So is the box going to move? No, it's going to continue to stay at rest. Check out this box. This box is already moving. It's moving to the right at a constant speed and these two forces are acting on it. What is the net force acting on this box? 100 newtons minus 100 newtons equals 0 newtons of applied force. So will the motion change? No. This, mo this box, which is already moving to the right at a constant speed, is going to continue moving to the right at a constant speed as long as these forces acting on it are balanced. This one you guys are very familiar with. An object at rest is at rest because the forces acting on it are balanced. But this one is a little bit more difficult to wrap your head around. So make sure you understand that an object can have balanced forces on it and be moving as long as that movement is constant. A constant speed is a result of balanced forces. So if the net force is zero newtons, will there be a change in the motion? I hope you're thinking no. When the net force is zero and the forces are balanced, the motion is going to be the same. An object at rest will stay at rest, but an object that's already in motion, moving at a constant speed in a straight line, will continue to move at a constant speed in a straight line as long as the forces are balanced. All right, now we're going to talk about unbalanced forces, which are unequal forces acting on an object. These forces can be working in the same direction or they can be working in different directions. And unbalanced forces cause acceleration. 
And remember, acceleration occurs when an object speeds up, slows down, or stays at the same speed and just changes its direction. All three of these changes in motion are a result of unbalanced forces. So let's see how unbalanced forces cause acceleration using net force diagrams. So here again, we have an object at rest. What is the net force? Well, we have two forces, two vectors on the right side of the box that are moving in the same direction. So we have to add those together. 50 newtons plus 50 newtons equals 100 newtons. And then we have 75 newtons working in the opposite direction. So we subtract that and we end up with a net force of 25 newtons. Let me fix that. So we have an applied force of 25 newtons on the box. Will the box move? Yes, the box is going to move because the forces are unbalanced. It is going to move in the direction of the larger force, which in this case is to the right. So the box is going to speed up to the right. It's going to accelerate, and it's going to continue to accelerate and speed up and get faster and faster and faster as long as the forces are unbalanced. This diagram shows two forces acting on a box which is at rest. Will these forces cause a change in the motion? Yes. How will this box move as a result of these two vectors? Well, it's going to move up and to the right. More to the right than up because of the 100 newtons moving the box to the right. We have a smaller amount of force moving up from the bottom, so the box is going to move up and to the right, but more to the right than up. So if there is a net force, will there be a change in motion? And I hope you're thinking yes. If, the net, if there is a net force, then the forces are unbalanced and there will be acceleration. Whether it be speeding up of an object, the slowing down of an object, or in this case, the change of direction of an object. All right, so let's take a look at forces on a graph because you need to be able to identify where on a graph forces are balanced and unbalanced. So I want you to make sure that you draw in this position versus time graph and also label in these line segments and these line points because we're going to be talking about each of these points and each of these line segments. So we are going to talk about the location on the line we're going to describe the motion of the object at that point or on that segment and then determine whether or not the forces are unbalanced or unbalanced according to the motion. So let's start with location A. That's this line segment right here. The motion of the object is stopped or at rest. So the object is at rest in line segment A and an object that's at rest will continue to be at rest as long as the forces acting on it are balanced. So we have balanced forces acting on this object in line segment A. But at point B, the object is no longer at rest. It begins to move forward. So the object accelerates and begins moving forward at point B. So right here at this moment of time, at this one second moment, the forces become unbalanced and those unbalanced forces cause the acceleration. The object begins to speed up at this point and move forward. In line segment C, we have an object moving at a constant speed, and I know that because the slope is straight. The line is a straight line, so this is a constant speed. I can calculate the speed by taking the distance traveled divided by the time. So line segment C starts at 20 meters and ends at 60 meters. So there's a 40 meter distance traveled over one, two seconds of time. So the object is moving at a constant speed of 20 meters per segment per second in segment C. Constant speed is a result of balanced forces. So the object has balanced forces acting on it while it's moving through segment C. At point D, right here, what does the object do? Well, it comes to a stop at point D. 
And so the forces acting on it right there at that point are unbalanced because there was some acceleration. It slowed down to a stop. And because of that acceleration, the forces must have been unbalanced. Line segment E, the object is at rest once again. And so the forces acting on it right here throughout line segment E are once again balanced because the object is not moving. At point F, the object begins to accelerate again. It begins moving backward. And so the forces acting on it were unbalanced. Those unbalanced forces is what made that object that was at rest start moving. So it began to start moving, it sped up at point F. And then finally at point G, we have the object that is moving backward at a constant speed. In this case, I look at the distance. It starts at 60 and ends at 20, so it traveled a distance of 40 meters, but it traveled that distance in one and a half seconds from 4.5 seconds to six seconds. So one and a half seconds of time passed from the beginning of line segment G to the end of line segment G. So to calculate the speed, I take 40 meters divided by 1.5 seconds and I get a speed of 26.6 meters per second. So this object actually moves at a faster constant speed along line segment G than it did at line segment C. But the point is, that all along that line, since it's a straight line, the object was moving at a constant speed of 26.6 meters per second. So the forces acting on the object throughout line segment G must have been balanced because there was no change in the motion throughout this line segment. All right, guys, you will need to be able to look at graphs and identify whether or not the forces that are causing the motion on that graph are balanced and unbalanced. Now your support item is to research why we use simple machines and if you were helping the Egyptians build the pyramids, which of the simple machines could you not live without and why? Alright guys, that's it for me. I'm out.